Joined with Labor MP Peter Khalil and the Liberal Senator James Patterson. Uh, Peter, we'll start off with you. Uh, is our migration system failing? Yes, it's broken. Uh, good morning, Peter, I should say. Good morning, James. It, it, the, the migration system is broken. It's in need of systemic reform. It's unstrategic. It's slow. It's unplanned. Um, really, um, you know, over the last nine years under a Liberal government, uh, it's become a dog's breakfast, frankly. And I, one of my main criticisms of the migration system, and I've written about this in op-eds and so on, is the creation of what I would call a, a permanent temporary permanent temporary workers, where there's been an increase of temporary visas and for temporary workers, um, and whereas you know permanent migration has remained pretty much steady or unmoved. And these temporary workers have been underpaid, they've been exploited. Um, and this, for me, is the real problem with this, of course, is that Australia... Uh, when we had a migration system where we were having uh, migrants come here, settle permanently, put a stake in the ground, start businesses, commit to becoming Australians, like my parents who came here, you know, some 50-odd years ago, um, these are the types of migrants we want. They built built Australia effectively post-World War II. Um, we haven't seen that. That hasn't been encouraged. So we're losing people uh, as well in a, competi a competitive sense to other countries where we're not... We don't have a migration system that uh, captures, you know, the best skilled migrants, those who want to become Australians. And, you know, I heard what Susan Lay said, and very quickly I'll say this. Please, please, they increased temporary migration numbers. They effectively doubled under the previous government, OK? And they talked about congestion busting. They, they did a small cut to permanent migration, but temporary visas doubled, and 87% of those temporary visas, those workers, were in Sydney and... And, and Melbourne. So talk about congestion. The previous government actually added to that with their smoke and mirror play about migration systems, uh, about the migration system. So we are seeking to fix this. There's right. going to be some major overhaul and the minister is going to be talking about that today. There is that, but also you had the issue of COVID, which basically reduced migration to zero, James. And, and now we've got to play catch up, don't we? But what, what what's the ceiling here? Because you let too many folks in, rents jack up. Housing continues to become more unaffordable. So again, what's the num what's the number here? Well, Peter, there's no question, as Peter Khalil said, that migration built this country. We're a stronger, richer country today than we would otherwise be if it wasn't for the millions of migrants who've come from all around the world and chose to make Australia home. Uh, but the size and the composition and the timing of that migration intake are legitimate areas for public debate. And the government has been very critical. They've had a lot of rhetoric about the migration system. It's time for them to front up and provide some answers. What, what is their plan? How many people do they intend to bring? How are they going to reduce the numbers of temporary visa holders while also solving the skills shortages? And how are they going to house the people that want to come here when we are facing a housing affordability and rental crisis? Yeah. If Claire O'Neill isn't able to provide answers to that today, then really I think we'll all be wondering what the government has been doing for their first year in office if they're not coming up with answers to these problems. No, I mean, we, we, we had this story a few weeks ago, 650,000 was going to be the number this financial year and last. Is that is that going to be too many for those reasons, Pete? Rent and uh, housing prices? Yeah, there's no doubt there are pressures on infrastructure, on housing, rental uh, pressures as well. Uh, and, and James is right in the sense that you've got to get the balance right. My argument, of course, is that, um, in fact, the previous government increased temporary work visas and actually added to this problem to a certain extent while not increasing or reducing permanent skill migration, is which is what we actually need to drive, um, you know, yeah. uh, not just our economy, but our community, um, as we said, we both agree that it was built on migration, but the type of migration is really, really important. Um, and so, yes, investment in housing. Like, we've got a $10 billion housing fund. Ask James why they're opposing it. I think it's coming up to the Senate. Um, we're trying to find and push through policies that will address some of these pressures, uh, and yet we've got an opposition that will, will not uh, support that. Well, why not support it, James? Well, because we have a very serious budget situation and the government is engaging in a whole series of off-book transactions where they're going to take on billions of dollars of debt for uncertain benefit at a time when interest rates are increasing and rising repayments on that debt is one of the greatest pressures on the budget. Uh, I'm very sceptical that that will make any material difference to the housing challenges we face and it might make the fiscal problems that we face uh, even more serious. I mean, uh, this government's got to be serious about these issues. If they actually want to increase uh, the supply of housing, what 
are they doing to, to do that um, other than just spending more money, spending more taxpayers' money in an inflated, overheated economy that we're already struggling with the cost of living? With all due respect, James, um, what it actually is, is 30,000 new houses, social and uh, uh, public housing. It's hundreds of millions of dollars to up, upgrade and main, maintenance for public housing. It's thousands of new homes for vulnerable Australians like women and children who are fleeing domestic violence and particularly one of the largest increases in homelessness of women, single women above 55. That is real. Um, and I, I can't understand where at one point, you're, at one hand, you're saying um, it's off book, oh, it's uncertain. On the other hand, you're saying, oh, we've got to do something about it. Where, where is the, where, where are these houses going to come from? They're going to come from legislation that we're trying to get through the parliament so that we can get on and invest in those new houses. Mm. And you're blocking it. I didn't know, I'm interested to hear, Peter, that legislation can build houses. Last time I checked, it was people uh, that build houses and we've got a massive shortage of workers who build houses. We've got a shortage of the key supplies that go into building houses and that's why the building industry is on the brink. I don't think a new build of the parliament is going to build a single new home. 